In summary, I rejected these buses because they were too crowded, too difficult to figure out where they were going, and no room for baggage. I would have had to place my baggage on a passenger seat, feeling guilty in a crowded bus, if I could find a spot to put my baggage. Now, obviously, they were dirt cheap, and they go almost anywhere in Sri Lanka. In vlog number eight in the series, Sri Lanka, three-week discovery tour, I'll be talking about how to travel in Sri Lanka. I'll talk about the option I picked, some of the options I did not pick, and finally, I'll talk about the option I should have taken, considering that at heart, I'm a budget traveler. Scrub along the timeline to get to a specific topic in this video. Welcome to Travels with Lobo, based in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Since my vlogs are the antithesis of 25 things to do in Sri Lanka, this detailed series of vlogs on Sri Lanka will be about 40 parts. So please subscribe, and if you learn something new, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. It seems the uh, default profession in Colombo, maybe Sri Lanka, <laughs> is to be a tuk-tuk driver. There are so many of them just as I run out of tuk-tuks. You see very few motorcycles, very few motorcycles, which is good for a, from a pedestrian viewpoint. And the tuk-tuk is still going very strong, whereas in Thailand, uh, you see less and less of them. In some parts you see none of them. And what they call tuk-tuks have been replaced by four-wheel vehicles. As you can see, I enjoyed every minute of my exploration of this city of uh, Colombo. It was uh, so fascinating, but then I'm easily fascinated when I'm traveling. However, at the same time, I had this nagging feeling of, what do I do in this country? Where do I go from Colombo? Being the type of traveler who doesn't do any advanced planning, I was on the spot. I had to decide, what the heck am I going to do in the next three weeks? So... Uh, I decided to start at the railway station because, what the heck, trains are cheap. Let's try it. And uh, by the way, I do admit I have attention deficit disorder because uh, I only spent two full days in Colombo. On the following day, I already moved on as I am obsessed with the idea that there's always something nicer around the next corner. Uh, so let's get back to the railway station. air here is unbelievable as we where I head to the railway station see if I can get off my ass and buy a ticket to somewhere it doesn't matter where I just got to get out of here Not that you're in downtown uh, Colombo Sri Lanka and you're paralyzed as to what to do next well you can do as I did and go to the railway tourist information service right there and uh, they will give you all the information about railways and so on. But surprisingly, it turns out into a spiel of car and driver because the railway doesn't go to a lot of places. Now, bottom line, that's what I went for, car and driver, despite the fact that it was expensive. But it's so time consuming finding information about how to go and where to go that uh, I felt in the limited time that I have, that was the best option for, wor for better or worse. A very important part of your trip is to drop in at the Railway Information Center and get your trip lined up right here. Uh, they're very good at it. Uh, I was kind of lost until I came here, so make sure you drop by here, the Railway Information Center. They'll get your trip mapped out for you. That is Sampath, who is uh, outlining a 17 day, 16 night tour for me with car and driver, gasoline, train tickets at certain parts of the trip, and accommodations. Surprisingly enough, it's all done by a secretary doing this in handwriting as if this had never been done before. So there it is, my 17 day trip, uh, all outlined for me in handwriting. This is it. Just follow it. 
Well, when I say that's it, there was a little uh, of the little detail, and that was a price: two hundred four thousand two hundred fifty Sri Lankan rupees. That converts to about one thousand eighty U.S. dollars, or sixty-three dollars U.S. a day, or a hundred dollars Canadian a day. That is a fair amount of change, so I asked for a receipt, and that seemed to create some consternation. And they finally came up with a receipt. Now look what this is, a house rent receipt. Imagine anywhere else going to a railway information station, uh, deciding on a deal for car and driver, and ending up with a house rent receipt as your receipt. Well, it's Sri Lanka, what can I say? And there is a map of the Sri Lanka railway. You can see from this map that the railway network is rather limited and you couldn't just tour this country by uniquely using the railway. And I didn't. I took a train only twice on the very first day from Colombo to Anuradhapura and that's where I met my driver for the rest of the tour. And, and of course I took the world famous blue train that you see in the illustration that goes through Sri Lankan tea country. It you don't just go to Sri Lanka without taking that blue train through the tea country. So what might a typical train in Sri Lanka look like? Uh, well, here's one that uh, I videoed in Gaul. It went from Gaul to Colombo, so it was a long train. This is uh, one of the longest trains uh, I've seen. And it's uh, pretty well full. Except for this car. The car and driver part of my tour started in Anurandapura and ended on the south beaches at Marissa. Surprisingly so, because had I just done that, I would have missed the best part in Sri Lanka, and that was Gaul. If you have an extended stay in Sri Lanka, in my mind, Gaul would be the place to go. And if you can't stand the heat, and many people can't, head for the tea country, the high hills of Nuwara Elia. So what do I have to say about car and driver? I think it's an excellent way to go. Everything worked out well. Uh, I happen to have two drivers. Uh, the first one spoke English quite well, the second not so much. And that brings up a very important point. Uh, you have no control over how well the driver speaks English. Now keep in mind that the driver is not a tour guide. He may give you information as you're driving along, but he will not go onto the tourist sites to give you a guided tour. I really appreciated that. Being car and driver, the accommodations were in the suburbs, so to speak. You were never in the center of the city. I'm a city guy. I would have liked to have accommodations in the center of the city. I also felt the accommodations could have been a bit better, especially considering the price of the tour. It was not cheap. In summary, car and driver if you don't want to worry about anything and just enjoy it. And you're not concerned about price. So what about using public buses to get around to see Sri Lanka? Well, let me give you a few clips which led me to believe that no, this is not practical. Just outside the fort to the uh, north, you find uh, the bus station. All these buses going to all parts of the country. Most of them look like this one here. Very, very basic, very crowded, no room for luggage. This one is going to Udugama. You can use them, but it's a hell of an ordeal. Look at how packed this thing is. Just packed. Ready to go over here. Yeah, he is rolling. Hope this guy isn't. This is the the ultimate here. You've uh, heard of distracted driving. Distracted driving. What do you call this? 
Oh my gosh, how, how could a guy see? Now, it wasn't until practically the end of my trip that I had finally discovered some real buses, some real tour buses kind of thing. There are uh, what we would call normal buses, air conditioning, maybe reserved seats. But they only run up and down the toll roads, like from, uh, from Colombo down to Gao and maybe a few other places. Uh, these buses could not navigate the normal, busy, crowded streets of uh, Sri Lanka. These on the other side can. In summary, I rejected these buses because they were too crowded, too difficult to figure out where they were going, and no room for baggage. I would have had to place my baggage on a passenger seat, feeling guilty in a crowded bus, if I could find a spot to put my baggage. Now, obviously, they were dirt cheap, and they go almost anywhere in Sri Lanka. Being a budget traveler, uh, if I had to do it over again, I would probably not go for the car, driver, and accommodations trip that I did. Here's what I would do. And I go back to vlog number one of uh, Sri Lanka Essentials. Just have a look. By the time I got to Sri Lanka, I felt like a seasoned traveler, at least in Asia. And I was proud of myself because I got money. What next? Let's get a SIM card. Yes, this is the first country where I got a SIM card at the airport. And that's the way it should be done. Right in the airport arrival hall, you'll find the Dialogue mobile network booth. And that's where I got my SIM card. I gave him my phone and five minutes later I had the SIM card installed. Very importantly, that gave me a phone number in Sri Lanka and also allowed me internet access for the entire length of the trip. I think for the three-week period, it cost me about $40, money well spent. Your smartphone undoubtedly has Google Maps installed, and you can go ahead and use it. But your next step should be to find a Wi-Fi area where you can download the Sri Lanka map for Google Maps. That way, you can do offline navigating and not use the data on your SIM card. That's very important. You'll also have installed on your phone either Agoda or Booking.com to make your hotel reservation in advance. In my case, it was the Grand Oriental Hotel, the Grand Dame of Colombo. I made that hotel reservation back in Thailand before my arrival. And the hotel, well, it smacks of the British Empire about as much as it gets. Now, there's one part of the secret sauce at the airport that I was missing. and I regret I did not know this, big time. The secret sauce that I was missing was the ride-hailing app called Pick Me. Had I known about this, this would have made my life in Sri Lanka so much easier, as you can get around independently with no problem. With Pick Me, you need a phone number so the driver can call you and contact you, hence the necessity of a SIM card. It was thanks to the student in Kandy, which is uh, Sri Lanka's second largest city, who uh, told me about Pick Me and helped me load it onto my phone. Had I known about uh, Pick Me at the airport, my trip would have turned out very differently. I would have traveled totally independently as opposed to, well, as it turned out. You'll see later. Once my car and driver tour was over at Marissa, I couldn't wait to use Pick Me for the rest of the trip. It worked seamlessly, beautifully, and got me up to Nagambo, having spent some time in that wonderful city of Gaul. On the app, all you need to do is put in your destination, and uh, within minutes, you will get a price and a driver who is going to pick you up. More or less, the price could be about half of what you would pay if you just walked up to a, to a tuk-tuk or to a taxi and asked for a price. So you can't beat pick me. Yes, your driver will probably not be speaking English, but that really doesn't matter because you're go only going from point A to point B. Therefore, Pick Me is your go-to app for getting around Sri Lanka. That's not to say you can't take a train somewhere, but when you arrive, it's Pick Me. Your accommodations, of course, you would get with Booking.com or Agoda, whatever, on, on a day-to-day -day basis even. And uh, for a three-week itinerary, you could follow my itinerary or Google search it and you'd come up with something. Remember, you can't do any of this if you didn't get a SIM card at the airport or elsewhere. So that's very important. If you're still here, kudos to you. I hope you learned something as to how to get around Sri Lanka. And join me next week as I start on that car and driver trip with a train ride. See you next week.